What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this series we're continuing with making a zombie AI in Unreal Engine 4. In this episode I'm going to do some refinements to the sensing on the zombie AI and then we're going to import our new animations and our character to make our zombie a bit scarier. And then in the next episode we're going to be doing some more complex stuff in terms of tasks where we're going to chase the player and attack the player. But this one isn't going to be as long as some of the other ones, we're just going to go through this quickly. I want to apologise for the lack of uploads recently because of the holiday season and I've been working. Um, so that's obviously uh, had an effect on um, me being able to do YouTube. Uh, but there's an update video which I'm going to be making in the next few days or so. So uh, remember to subscribe and uh, watch out for that one. So let's go into our zombie controller and there's a few things I want to do here. So if we go to our AI perception, um, we've got a few refinements to do. So if I just go ahead and play here, you can see that our zombie is a bit stupid and he can't really see us unless he's looking directly at us, see, and he just walks away. And we have to really do our best to make sure that he runs towards us. So. Let's get that fixed. So, so go into the zombie controller and the first thing we're going to do is set our peripheral vision to somewhere 135. That should be fine. Let me just make sure I'm getting these numbers correct. Yep, 135 should do. Um, then for our sight radius, let's put this one on 550. And then the loose sight radius has to be a number larger than that. So let's put this to 600. Next to our maximum age, let's set this to 5 seconds. There we go, and that's all we need to do here. So if I were to jump back into our into our game, as you can see, he can see us that little bit better. But still, it's not perfect. There's a few more things we need to do, so let's go ahead with that. So we're finished with our zombie controller for the time being. We don't need that anymore. Let's go into our behavior tree. So if you remember from the previous episodes, this is where all of the logic for the AI actually happens. So we've got this, um, this sequence uh, here on the blackboard, I mean on the behavior tree. And this is the first one. So it's always going to go to this one first. And then if this condition isn't met, it's going to jump back to here and then go to this one. And obviously there's some issues with that. For example, when we jump into the game, it's going to immediately want to go to a random location, despite the fact that we're right in front of it. So if we go to here, then the first condition here, so we got the blackboard base condition uh, based on the fact that you can't see the player. If we click on this one on the blue area, and on result changed, what we want to do is we want to set this one to both. There we go, and then this is going to highlight it in sort of cyan, green, or um, indigo sort of colour. Um, whenever you highlight it, and then this one's blue. So this is now going to do either of them. In fact, when when it starts, it's going to abort the fact yeah yes yeah, so, so it so it's gonna jump back if it can see the player so it doesn't have to wait until it's gone to its location and then go back and then go to the target location of the player so it's just gonna save a bit of time it's more efficient this way hope that makes sense <laughs> okay cool right so now we're to jump back into here so it's gonna run straight for us perfect and now this means it's a just a bit harder for the uh, AI to escape from our reach and we do have to run a bit further and hide a bit harder so it does make it a bit more realistic and you might have seen there is that he didn't run towards us despite the fact that we were right within his peripheral vision and that's because we've set the sight radius and the sight radius is basically how far he can see now Using context here, this is a zombie, and zombies, they can't really do many things well. One of those is sights. So what I've done is I've actually reduced how far you can see, because assume that you're a zombie for, for one moment, and 
you can't really see very well the infection it's messed with your eyes it's messed with your hearing uh, so that's the sort of concept which I'm going for so he can't see very well so that's why so you have to be fairly near him um, apparently this is far enough to be able to trigger that so if I were to run try to get as much distance from him so he can't see me anymore there we go then he might be able to in a minute let's just see where he goes let's just get a bit nearer to him he likes going up there where's he gone He's all over the place. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, so we do need to try a bit harder to uh, to escape him. But it should be a bit easier now for him to detect where we are. In fact, what we probably could do is change the AI perception's peripheral vision from 135 to 180. So he's got a good peripheral vision. It might be a bit unrealistic. But he can always see us. In fact, what what I'm going to do is set this to 150. I don't know what the peripheral vision of a human is, but we can just assume 150 on this for the time being. There we go. Right, so now that that's sorted, so that's just a minor tweak which I wanted to do. Let me just check my recording here, make sure that we're going fine. Nice, yeah. So that's just a minor tweak which I wanted to do just to make it a bit easier for the zombie to chase after the player. Now, let's make the zombie look a bit spookier. So what I've done is I have downloaded uh, the mesh of a zombie and four animation files. The idle, the run, the dying, and the attack. And these are four animations which we're going to use later on in the series. We are going to use these three files for the time being, but we're going to import all of them now. Now, the way which we're going to import these meshes and animations and get them working with our AI is pretty much the same with how we've done it in other series and other videos on this channel. So, if we go back to content, let's go and make a new folder called Zombie. Zombie. There we go. And this is going to be split into two things. So, we're going to have our meshes and we're going to have our, our animations. Is that that? Um... Where is it? There we go. Cool. Okay, so um, let's go and Im import all of these files. So we've got our FBX file for the mesh of the zombie, so what the zombie looks like, and then we've got these animations. So in fact, let's let's import our mesh first because it might get confused. We want to set a target uh, mesh for the animations. So let's import our zombie. There we go. And then, because we don't already have this in the uh, engine, it's not going to have a skeleton to import into, so we can just leave that. Okay, so now that our mesh is imported, it took a bit longer than I wanted it to, but it's going to throw up an error here, well, just a warning. We can ignore this one, we don't need to worry about that. And it's going to start shading uh, the mesh, it's going to do all of the compiling. Uh, while that's doing that, Let's go make a new folder for our animations. And I've named this Zombie 1 because it's likely that we're going to use multiple zombies for different types. Ones which can run, ones which uh, can't uh, run very far, well, well, ones which can't see very well but can hear really well. So a bit like the clickers from um, The Last of Us. So now we've got our attack, our dying, our idle and our run. Let's go and import those as well. And then this is where we need to do a few things. So set the skeleton to the zombie 1 skeleton uh, and make sure to uh, select import animations otherwise it's not going to import anything. Um, import mesh, we don't need to import them. In fact, uh, import mesh. Oh yeah, so you can just uncheck import mesh. These animations, I think that should be the way we do it so and then click import all and then this is going to import all of the keyframed animations and i'll be back when this is done there we go so now that these are all imported um again we'll have another error here we can just ignore that we can save these 
and it might take a bit of time to save. Oh wait, no, it's saved, cool. So there's a couple of take animations here of the base pose we can get rid of. So these are suffixed with the words take. We can just get rid of these ones because we don't need those. And then we'll be left with four animations. There we go, cool. And what we can do is just to initialize these animations, just to make sure that they look right, you can drag these into any environment you want. And they shall load, there we go. And they look all right, there might be some issues with the hair, but we can sort that out later on. There we go. So let's just get rid of those from our scene right now. Go back to zombie, and then we can make a folder for our textures and our materials. There we go. So I'll just drag all of the icons here with which I've got red tags underneath those and put those into your textures folder. And then we can make another folder for our materials. And then all of the ones which are circular or have got green tags on the bottom. And you'll find that despite the fact that we've imported multiple um, animations, because we've because we've assigned it to that one mesh, it's not going to duplicate. Okay. So now, if we go on to our zombie character, we're going to have to go back a bit. Uh, zombie, where is it? Okay, here, here we go. Yeah. So you'll see that it's actually still using the third person, and in BP. So we need to duplicate this um, and make our own anim BP for the zombie. So that's relatively easy. What we can do is just go into um, mannequin animations. Then we've got third person BP. And let's duplicate this. Okay. And we're going to rename this to zombie BP. Well, zombie anim BP. There we go. Cool. And what we want to do with this is open it up and let's see if I can remember how to do this. Oh, do, 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 do. oh yeah, of course. We want to retarget it. So, if, so we, let's just get, get rid of that for the time being. <laughs> so right click on third person and in BP. Right no, uh, sorry, go on to Asset uh, um, Actions. Sorry, no, sorry, I, I'm all over the place. Retarget Anim Blueprints and, and select that one. Uh, uncheck Show Only Compatible and then we've got this one here. It's, it's a bit larger, we may have to scale that down, that is a bit of a concern. But let's just retarget this now. There you go. Cool. And what we can do is just get rid of these ones. Force delete there. There we go. Save these and then we'll edit our Alan BP. So go into your third person, uh, no, so your your idle run. So this is where the animations are kept. So as you can see, we're no longer referencing any animations. So it's going to default to this T pose. But what we've got here is we've got our list of our animations which are assigned to this skeleton. So let's just take a reference of what animations we've got. So this would be running, this would be walking, and this would be idle. Now we don't have a walking animation, so we can get rid of this. There we go. And it's going to throw up some errors. You can just ignore that. Yeah, it's got no animation. Let's ignore that for the time being. There we go. Okay. And then let's go from idle. So let's drag that into here. So for our first point. Ooh. I don't know why that's doing that. And put that into our run. There we go. So now we're going from idle to uh, run. Why is it not? Let's save this. 375, yeah. It's obviously right. There we go. Yeah, so the blend spaces can be a bit iffy. Uh, but if you just give it a few attempts, it, it will eventually work. So um, let's go on to our blueprint and just see if everything's working and compile this. There we go. Now it's going to throw up some errors. This is about the jumping. Now we can get rid of our jumping because we don't need it anymore. Uh, so go to your state machine and 
get rid of these three nodes here. Okay. Because because the zombie won't be jumping. And then compile it, save it, and then there'll be no more errors. Fantastic. We can close that as well. Now let's rename this to what we called it last time. So our zombie one and BP. Okay. And let's rename this as well to zombie one and BP. We will have to do this again when we introduce new zombies into the game. Um, but that won't be as difficult as the process we've just done because we can duplicate this one. Drag that into your zombie folder just to make everything neat and organized. There we go. And let's go into our zombie character and change it over. So go to AI, zombie character. Now this is where the fun begins. We can change this from SK Mannequin to Zombie 1, and then it's going to remove our Anim class. We can re add that here. There we go, perfect. Compile that, save it, and close all of these ones. And now, there we go. There is some sliding issues, but that's just based on the speed. I'm sure we can sort that out. Uh, let's see how fast this is going. Um, so go to um, zombie, go to anim idle run. So this wants to go at 375. Let's let's change our max walk speed for the zombie to 375. In fact, it might not be the correct number. Sorry, I'm going back and forth here. And not going on the one I want either. <laughs> Right, what speed is this? And you can find out what the speed is just by hovering over it, and it doesn't say. Two AC. Okay, well let's put that to three seventy five. So go back to your AI, go back to your zombie character. And there should be a component for walk speed. So let's just search that up. There we go. Max walk speed. So that's 600. So that's, so that's why the um, the animation was sliding. So was it 375? can't remember. I think it was. That should look a bit more natural now. There we go. That looks more natural. That looks perfect. Okay, cool. Right, so that does it for this episode. Um, apologies for the lack of uploads recently again. Um, the upload schedule should be back to normal once every week. Um, what, what we're going to do next is just to introduce some um, attacking animations, um, a better chasing um, mechanics for the player. Uh, and then after that, it should be relatively smooth sailing. We can introduce new types of zombies. So ones which can run fast, ones which can jump, ones which can hear but not see. You get the point. It's going to be really, really cool. So I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to like and remember to subscribe so you don't miss further uploads. And I'll see you in the next one.